Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we saw that the efficiency of the Carnot engine, which is of course a purely theoretical engine, is equal to 1 minus T cold over T hot. And then we calculated what the efficiency was at different temperatures. Now we're going to see where that equation actually came from. So what we have in front of us is what we call a Carnot cycle. And the Carnot cycle consists of two adiabatic processes and two isothermal processes. Now why is that? Well, it turns out that an adiabatic process is essentially like a spring where you can store energy. Since there's no heat exchange in an adiabatic process, the work done by the adiabatic process simply comes from the internal energy of the gas. And then when you do work on the gas via an adiabatic process, you put that energy right back in by doing work on it, not by adding heat to it. So it actually is like a reversible process, and it's simply like a spring that stores energy and releases it, stores it and releases it. And as we'll see, is that the work done by this adiabatic process is equal to the negative of the work done of this adiabatic process, so that the work done by the two adiabatic processes simply cancel out, and we're left with the work done by the two isothermal processes. So here on the board, we have the work done by each of the four processes, the two adiabatic processes and the two isothermal processes. So when we add all the work up, we realize that the work from two to three is the negative of the work from four to one. Those are the two adiabatic processes. So essentially, we can cancel those out because one is the negative of the other. And then the total work done is simply the sum of the two isothermal processes of course, going from 1 to 2, that's positive work. Going from 3 back to 4, that's negative work. So we understand that is actually negative work. And then if we write the equations down of those two isothermal processes, we get nRT times the natural log of V2 over V1 and the nRT times the natural log of V4 over V3. Notice that here it's the hot temperature because we're on the top process. Here's the cold temperature. We're on the bottom process right here. And so that we add that up and of course we realize that this is a negative term. So now we understand that the efficiency is equal to the work done, which is of course equal to this, divided by the heat added to the process at the high temperature. So that's the heat added to the process in this process right here, and that would be nRTH times the natural log of V2 over V1. Because with an isothermal process, we know that all the work done is equal to the heat added to the gas and all the work and then all the work done on the gas is equal to the heat subtracted from it so we realize then that the heat added must be nrth times the natural log of v2 over v1 then if we simplify the equation we end up with this right here let me circle this because this is kind of important so obviously the nrs will cancel out we have t cold over t hot we have a plus here the natural log of V4 over V3 and the natural log of V2 over V1. But now we go back to the adiabatic process and we realize with the adiabatic process that T hot V2 to the gamma minus 1 must be T cold V3 to the gamma minus 1. So that's going from 2 to 3. That's this process right here. And we know that this must be true. And of course, we can do the same thing for this process right here because it's adiabatic. So we can write this. And then we see that T cold over T hot is the same as V2 over V3 to the gamma minus 1, and T cold over T hot is equal to V1 over V4 to the gamma minus 1. Hmm. So now we go back over here, we see V2 over V1. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're not there yet. Sorry. I'm confused myself a bit. So, <laughs> so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show that V2 over V3 is equal to V1 over V4, and then by rearranging the terms, by bringing V4 up here and V2 down there, I could write this relationship. That's what I wanted. I wanted this relationship right there. And notice that V4 over V3 is equal to V1 over V2. Hmm, bummer, because that's the inverse of this. But since we're taking the natural log of that, we can reverse the order of that and put a negative there. And that's exactly what we did. We wrote V1 over V2 and by substituting a negative there, because essentially it's to the negative one power, which can be brought to the front. And now we see that the NRs cancel out. And now we realize that V4 over V3 is equal to V1 over V2. So the natural log of that is also equal. So that cancels out. And so eventually we end up with the efficiency of a Carnot engine, therefore, 
is equal to 1 minus t cold over t hot. And that is how it's, it was derived. And Carnot was the one who thought of that, realizing that the two adiabatic processes are simply storage of energy and then giving it back, and they're equal on the opposite ends. And now we can see that the greater the difference in the temperatures, the greater the hot temperature versus the cold temperature, the farther out you bring that process, the greater the efficiency becomes. If you bring T cold down and make that a smaller number, you subtract a smaller number from one, and so therefore you have a greater efficiency. So therefore you can see that with a Carnot engine, the most ideal engine you can come up with, the greatest efficiency is simply the efficiency when these temperatures are as far away from each other as possible. Ideally, the cold temperature goes to zero, of course that's impossible, and then you have maximum efficiency. And that is how it's done.